Hello, I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel and today on episode number 13 of Mild Melty Cheeses we are looking at Monterey Jack. So I have a couple from grocery stores here. Well this has a brand called Newbridge. This one is from a grocery store and they're deli wrapping and it doesn't have a brand. And then I've got one here from some craft creamery in Wisconsin that is Monterey Jack with moral and leek, which is kind of mushroom and a, and a leek. And then Boar's Head Caramelized Onions. I've got some flavors added, some flavoring agents added in a couple of those. And then maybe I'll do a extra melty thing, a mac and cheese or nachos or something with some Monterey Jack melted on it. So it's going to be a busy day. And Monterey Jack is an American invention. And as described in Liz Thorpe's The Book of Cheese, and we are running through the Havarti Gateway, which are mild flavored cheeses that melt wonderfully well. Monterey Jack, here it is. On page 120, it's usually made with cow milk. And she recommends the brands of Cabot, Maple Leaf Cheese, which might be a pepper jack, uh, Sierra Nevada, Vela Cheese, and uh, so Monterey Jack was invented in California. California is a big dairy state, if you don't know that. And this is another Welsh curd cheese, where the curds are washed off some of the way as we moved. And you can get a few holes or lumpier, irregular kind of uh, texture to it. But it almost always has a mild flavor. So that's what we're going to look at here as we start off. It's just the flavor and texture of the cheese. So the rest of this block got used for other things. So I'll just get it out now. And what? I've started opening these packages. Oh yeah, okay, so that's gonna be easy. Let me cut this way. I'm just bring out a block. There, I can work with that. I will leave those flavored guys till later because we don't want to mix things up. So if you've been liking the videos you're seeing here on this channel, please give this one a thumbs up and leave comments and questions down below. Share it with friends, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to get notified when the new videos come out. And we are going to dive right in because we have a lot to do here. I'm going to cut a few pieces of this room temperature Monterey Jack that's been out for a while. Very moist, falls apart easily. It's a buttery nose, there's a tang to it. It's pretty interesting. Mm, big piece. It's very slightly pasty. There's a bit of salt I can taste, and there's dairy notes, a creamy nose, a buttery nose. Uh, maybe tiny little particles that uh, chew up into a paste, pasty thing in your mouth. But it is pretty high moisture. Uh, just to compare the taste right away, I'm going to do this Newbridge brand. Which doesn't really say anything about how it's made, but distributed by a company in Decatur, Georgia. So let's see how this taste compares. Texture is immediately more moist. It's wetter cheese, it goes away more easily, less salt and less flavor in general. I don't get the buttery note, I don't get many dairy notes, and I don't get the tang. So whatever this is at Doranax, I want to find out what that is and get more and keep buying that kind. So I'm sure they'll tell me at the counter what brand it is. So I'm gonna part now start putting this on crackers and I'm not gonna be a very big fan of the new bridge I don't think this is at a grocery store I frequent so on a buttery cracker will it be twice as buttery I 
It is. It's twice as buttery. Uh, one and a half times as salty. Because the cracker is not salt free. But that would be fine, fine on a cheese board. It's one of the milder members of the collection. Let's put it on a more interesting or complicated cracker. Like this thing. Which has uh, apricots and pistachios in it. See how it gets along in that genre of cracker. There's a chewiness and a toughness of some of the ingredients in a cracker like that. So it's resisting chewing. And the flavors are fairly strong in that, so the cheese is kind of getting lost. And that's a good one. Okay, so I wouldn't put the blander, milder cheese on a more complex crack cracker. Now, I'm going to take a seeded, no, oh, well, yeah, it's a seeded non wheat. Cracker. Hold on. Fruits and nuts in my teeth. Fruit and nut clearing. Okay, now I'm trying the uh, less flavorful new bridge on a non wheat cracker. There were some dairy notes, some creaminess uh, when it was on a cracker that contrasted texture wise, flavor wise. So that wasn't. Uh, too bad. Some of the flavors came back, I think. Let me try it on a Triscuit. Low salt Triscuit, but it's going to have a lot of uh, wheat flavor for sure. This often covers up things. Let's see. Great texture contrast. Pretty strong flavor contrast, but it's not because dairy nuts are popping out of the cheese. It's just a mild wet thing is on my cracker. So they are to the plain side, to the less intense side on their own. Then I'll do a couple pairings and I'll move on to these cheeses, which are kind of like pairings themselves. So I'm going to take a buttery cracker and a that's not going to hold it. I'm going to do some golden raisins. Yeah, they're pretty good bland. Let's see. Some sun-dried tomatoes do. On a buttery cracker with the more flavorful Monterey Jack. Mmm. Okay, the sun-dried tomatoes pop like they usually do with most cheeses. They are sweet and tangy from the acid and they're a little earthy and smoky. So they have lots of flavor notes to, lots of flavors to contrast with. And I was getting a fair amount of dairy notes out of the cheese. And I'm not sure it was a great combination. Nothing really clashed, but nothing really went either. So i have not spend my sun-dried tomatoes that way. Now, let me try one more thing here. I'm going to try a good amount of Ray Jack with a mission fade. So it's going to be stronger flavors than the golden raisins. And I'm not going to even mess with almonds. So, mission fig. Okay, the fruitiness contrasted. Dairy notes were not very loud, but they were there. And the cracker provided a little contrast in texture. So the flavors are very mild in Monterey Jack. So that's the kind of the point of my uh, next <coughs> things that I'll bring in after we try these guys. I'm going to do a mac and cheese that has a little bacon in it, chopped up, 
And then I'll do the baking with breadcrumbs on top and all that to try to add a few more flavors and notes to it. Now, which one of these should I do first? I have a hint of the flavors already. So I'm going to open up Moral and Leek. So I know something about Moral Mushrooms. It does smell a little mushroomy. But I don't know much about leeks. They're just kind of leaves. Might be in the onion family. Might be slightly sulfury. That sort of set of flavors. So I've had them in things, but I've not had many things featuring lots of leek. So I'll just put that out that way. So I can get something a little earthly like a mushroom and I can get something a little leaky. So let's see what the flavors are like. The underlying cheese has a texture more like my uh, unbranded kind. Uh, texture was good. Flavors are mild, but I'm, picking, I'm getting more leek. That earthiness or mushroom. Or I don't know what moral mushrooms taste like. I'm thinking the leek is the strongest flavor. And it's not bad. There's a tang to it, and I don't know if that's coming from leek or cheese. Seems like it's a cheese note. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's nothing... Uh, it's not really my wheelhouse. I'm not a big mushroom fan. And uh, if I studied leeks for a while, I'd probably find some things I'd like about them. But not a big fan right now. So I think I'm getting leek mostly. Is there a brand? Hand Crescent and Mus. Go to Wisconsin. Now I ordered this from Wisconsin Cheese Mart, and that's what showed up. And I like it. I could eat it. No big deal. No problem. But I wouldn't go reaching for it or buy it again. Now this one is Boar's Head, which is a nation famous nationwide brand. Usually has pretty good stuff. I think I've seen imported Gouda and domestic Gouda from them. So. Read the labels carefully to make sure you're getting what you really want. And I'll chop a piece off of this. So I can get a taste of Onion Jack, which is made with caramelized onions. So I'm seeing brownish. Yeah, it's to the brown side. Also Wisconsin made. You know, I don't have any room to work. Let me rearrange things. There. And get a taste of this guy. Mmm. Oh, that's a great flavor. Mild texture, very moist. Probably more like this moist cheese and texture. But the caramelized onions, you recognize that flavor immediately. You know right what it is. It's a little oniony, and then you pick up the caramelization. Yeah, it's sweet. And they probably started with a sweet onion. It's, yeah, it's good. But I'm looking for dairy nuts. I'm not really able to pick out any. So I'm not really sure I identify a butteriness, a creaminess, or a... Any kind of dairy nut. There's a bit of tang to it, but I'm not sure it goes with the onions or with the cheese. So, I'm not really going to pair anything with these two guys. Well, I did think about doing a, a pepper jelly with a caramelized onion jack. Is that too weird? No, I'll go ahead and try it. It's not working with anything else, so I will give that a try. So I think I'll try a Triscuit, and this is a homegrown red pepper jelly, which red bell pepper, sugar, apple, cider, jalapeno. 
Now I remember a surprising amount of flavor from that uh, recipe. Oh yeah, there's definitely an aroma there. Yeah, I think there's going to be strong flavors from this that will probably survive. Hmm. But it's all open. So I'm going to put a cheese, a piece of the caramelized onion jack on a triscuit, a low salt triscuit with some of the homegrown pepper jelly. Okay, that goes in a weird sort of way. I could not tell it was a cheese. The triscuit was good. This pepper jelly was good, strong, sweet, peppery. And I got some of the caramelized onion notes. I never knew I was chewing on cheese by texture or by flavor. So that's a sort of a pass and sort of a fail. So yeah, I'm not sure what to call that one. Okay, I think I'm done with this stuff. I'm going to bring in either nachos or uh, mac and cheese. So, I'll be back shortly. Okay, I'm back with the mac and cheese. This one's a little more deluxe than I usually do. I usually just uh, make uh, cheese sauce with a roux and dump in the uh, cooked pasta and put it in this bowl. But this one, I baked in the oven until it was nice and bubbly. And there are breadcrumbs on top that got browned. So this one's deluxe compared to my usual thing. So it may be too hot to eat. Let's dig in and see how this Mo Monterey Jack did as a melting cheese. I meant to add a few bacon bits to this because of the mildness of the flavor, but I forgot. So I'll have to be happy with what's in here now. Mmm. Great texture from the breadcrumbs. I'm tasting a cheese. A saltiness, a creaminess. It's not as strong like a cheddar, but it's a definitely cheese. A good crunch from the breadcrumbs. Yes, it's a mild white cheese flavor that I'm getting. So the sauce is just butter and flour to make a roux. Dump in a little bit of milk, whole milk, and let that thicken up and then the cheese goes in there. So there's plenty of sources for dairy nuts. And this is uh, working out well. If I would serve this at a dinner, I would eat the whole thing. So, win, win, win for the treatments and the uh, and the flavors. So the sauce is quite melty. There aren't any strings or anything indicating real ooey gooey type thing. I would think most kids would like that. And many adults. So I'm going to call that a win and uh, say goodbye for this episode. So again, please like this video, leave comments and questions, share with friends, subscribe and click that bell to get notified. And until next time, when we explore some more mild melty cheeses, cheers.